Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Shocking moments in court for a man charged for going on an anti-Semitic rant outside of an Oakland County synagogue. And now he has removed his hand to show the court his backside. I'm putting him in the wedding room. The man charged with ethnic intimidation has gone off in court twice in the past 24 hours, and now his bond has perhaps not surprisingly been revoked. This time, Hassan Shakur was in front of a Wayne County judge for an emergency bond hearing on separate charges, and an angry Shakur sealed his own fate with another disrespectful courtroom outburst. Rod Maloney live with the story. Um, Rod, what is it about this case? My goodness. Well, okay, uh, Kim Worthy's office asked for an emergency bond hearing in a felony assault case that comes from two and a half years ago. Now, we know he is an angry man because he was yelling at the judge yesterday in his case, but today, as you just saw there, he mooned another judge. I'll just continue on to say that uh, the Dearborn police... And now he has removed his pants to show the court his backside. I'm Wayne County 3rd District Court Judge Regina Thomas immediately turned off the Oakland County camera feed and revoked Shakur's bond in his Wayne County felony case. Shakur's mooning the judge goes on top of this yesterday before Magistrate Julie Nelson Klein. Thank you. Let the record reflect that you just gave the court the finger. Yes, I did. After that, considering the testimony, Shakur allegedly threatened preschoolers and their parents in front of Temple Beth El last Friday, now facing two felony counts of ethnic intimidation. Nelson Klein gave Shakur a million dollar cash bond. Judge Thomas released Shakur in a $10,000 bond in a case where he ended up charged with assault with a deadly weapon and assaulting a police officer back in April of 2020. In that case, at the height of COVID, it came as a result of an angry outburst at the Islamic Center of America on Ford Road in Dearborn, where he allegedly assaulted a female volunteer there and ended up with Dearborn police chasing him down the street as he carried a gun. Today, Judge Thomas admonished Shakur's attorney. I understand that his bond was set at a million dollars in Oakland County. I don't know if he can make that, um, but it, in the event that he does, he's going to be remanded and then he can be brought here. And, and then I'll see if he, he pulls his pants down in the courtroom. Okay, so Shakur remains in the Oakland County jail tonight on the million dollar bond. Should he be able to make that somehow? And so far, there's been no indication he can. He would then have to come here. And obviously, the judges are saying uh, we're going to make sure he stays off the street until his trial. He has not had his first trial here yet on that felony assault charge from 2020. Back to you. So, Rod, do, do we have any more on Choker's criminal background? Well, yes, it turns out that uh, about five years ago, 2017, he was in state prison because the Michigan Department of Corrections tells me he found a credit card, went out and used the credit card and bought $5,000 worth of IT equipment uh, and then uh, was caught. And so he ended up serving for theft in that case when he was 30 years old. Incredible. Okay. Rod, we appreciate it. Our other top story here at five thieves try to but fail to get away with some high priced SUVs at a Stellantis assembly plant. Check out these smashed Durangos that were stopped by the fence at the Stellantis Jefferson North plant on Detroit's east side. Sean Lay following that story uh, assembly plants Sean we are seeing have become uh, increasingly targets. That's right, Devin, and there's something different about this case that I want to show everyone, also show everyone on their screen if you take a look more of the remarkable video of this incident we got on the ground and from Drone 4. Those are expensive Durango SUVs. You can see the thieves not successful in getting them off the lot. There's a reason why this was a major fail for them. As I was driving down Connors, I looked over to the right because Early in the morning, it's chaos driving. It's like the Grand Prix. Cars be driving all crazy and wild. So I looked over to the right, and I saw the, the two trucks, like, over at the hill. Then I can kind of see the fence was kind of tow up. Drone 4 can show you what this mom saw at Connor and Charlevoix as she was taking her son to work at the Jefferson North Assembly Plant around 4.30 this morning. Two high-end, brand-new Dodge Durango SUVs on a small hill. The first SUV hung up in the security fence. An attempted theft right from the factory lot. 
as you can see, a failed attempt. JNAP is a popular target for brazen auto thieves who come onto the property, get into vehicles that come right off the assembly line. We're told some have keys in them to move the vehicles around the property more easily. Many times those thieves are successful in smashing through a security gate and driving off. And to be honest, I know the trust is insured. I mean, those people still out here. So if they have bad intentions, what they doing next? What they gonna try to do next? You know what I'm saying? This time, something different we noticed. Cables added to the security fence, and that's what stopped this steal. I see it, I hear about it, but I've never actually, you know, saw it. But when I saw them two trucks, I'm like, no, that's not an accident. Not an accident at all. I reached out to Stellantis to ask just about this year alone how many times there's been attempted thefts there or successful thefts. Stellantis does not want to share those numbers, only to say they're working with Detroit Police. Detroit Police tell us tonight, Devin, the Auto Thefts Task Force is on it. Yeah. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. Okay, Sean. All right, let's get to breaking news now out of New York City. Former President Donald Trump's company has been found guilty of tax fraud. Today's verdict coming after just two days of deliberations. As for punishment, the Trump organization could be fined up to $1.6 million, relatively small amount for a company of its size, though the conviction might make some of its future deals a bit more complicated. The special counsel for the Justice Department has subpoenaed officials in Metro Detroit asking for any communication with or about former President Donald Trump. The request was made in Wayne County and in counties in Wisconsin and Arizona. Last month, Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed a special counsel to oversee the investigations into the insurrection and the classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. State says Wayne County received the subpoena but wouldn't comment any further. A 16-year-old boy is charged with shooting two teenagers outside Henry Ford High School on Detroit's west side. Prosecutors say the teen fired a gun from a moving car last month, hitting two 16-year-old boys. Both were taken to the hospital to be treated for their injuries. The teen has been charged with two counts of assault with intent to murder and other gun charges. An arrest is made in a deadly shooting in a Greek town elevator. Detroit police say this is the suspect here who shot and killed a 29 year old man who did not hold the elevator door open for him. This happened in the 400 Monroe building last week. The suspect was taken into custody in Ohio and will be extradited to Michigan for charges. It is decision day in Georgia. The final Senate contest of the 2022 midterms underway at this hour. Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker campaigning across the state in search of votes before the polls close tonight. Let's get to Alice Barr following the final push from Washington. Alice. Good evening. Close to 2 million people have already voted early, including more than 76,000 who did not vote in the general election, a sign of just how high the interest is in this runoff. On this runoff election day in Georgia, voters are fired up. We have someone to be in, uh, to fight for me to, you know, make decisions that are best for me and my family. We're going to get this done one more time. Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock facing off against Republican challenger Herschel Walker, who greeted supporters today at a Marietta restaurant. I feel good. I feel good. We're going to win this election. But while rain didn't stop early morning voters in Atlanta, another factor may dampen Republican turnout. What we're hearing from some Republican voters is because control of the Senate isn't on the line. That's dampening some of that enthusiasm. Democrats retained control of the Senate by the narrowest possible margin and are looking to expand their majority with a Warnock win. I really want him back. He's got the experience. Warnock edged past Walker in last month's general election, but didn't get to 50% of the vote. The Democrat built up an advantage in the runoffs, record-breaking early vote count, but Republicans tend to show their strength on election day, and many are motivated by a chance to slow President Biden's agenda in the Senate. At the end of the day, is this more about Herschel Walker or more about a Republican seat? A Republican seat. Warnock far outspending Walker in this runoff, slamming the Republican over numerous scandals, while Walker's casting the Democrat as a rubber stamp for President Biden's policies. The final contentious and consequential race of the 2022 midterms now coming to a close. 
This has been one of the most expensive Senate races of all time with a combined $400 million in campaign spending. In this runoff, Warnock and the Democrats have outspent the Republican side by more than two to one margin. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, the, uh, in fact, the early voting in that runoff election has set a record in Georgia. All right. Um, well, consider this your it could be worse moment of the day, okay? These are live pictures from Depot Park in Ironwood. That's the western tip of the UP, and there's plenty of snow already there on the ground. You can kind of make out the clock up there at the top. For, we always remind you on election night that there is part of the UP that's in the central time zone. Oh, uh, that's Ironwood, what you're going to get. Right? I was like, what are you talking fact, about? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's only 4 o'clock, 4.10 uh, up I got there. You. Yeah. All right, back here at home, uh, we're dealing with uh, just a bit of rain. Yeah, let's get over to Paul Gross and for Kim tonight with a look at the first uh, forewarned forecast. Right, and I tell you, you know, you look at that snow and you have to remember, I have to tread a fine line. A lot of people want it to look like the season, but we all want good shopping weather and good driving weather. So. It's kind of a balance here, but right now we have nothing going on in the area. We have a stripe of rain and snow to the north. We'll talk more about that coming up in about 10 minutes, but basically we're not going to get so much that, but rather we'll get some scattered stuff coming in from the southwest during the evening and overnight hours. But right now still mild out there. Look at this low to mid 40s across the area. 45 in Detroit, 43 Hallport here on 45 right now over in Monroe and through the evening hours. Not much of a drop in temperature, just a, maybe a couple three degrees at most, just kind of staying in the low 40s here. The light showers developing, but developing later. So again, coming up in 10 minutes, we have things to talk about. We have great shopping weather Wednesday and Thursday, but the thing we need to talk about is Friday. We're monitoring that storm still. I have new model data to show you. I'll give you the latest on that coming up again in about 10